Welcome to the Getting Started in Dramatica Pro walkthrough video. This video shows you how to create a new story from scratch using Dramatica's built-in story guide. You'll see how to move around in the story guide, create characters to populate your story, go from title to scene creation including everything in between, print a report of your work. For writers new to Dramatica, I have a few recommendations on your first time using it. My first recommendation is for you to make up a story or use a fairy tale. Do not use one of your own stories. It's difficult to learn how Dramatica works and fix problems with your story at the same time. Spend no more than three minutes on a topic. It's easy to lose your sense of time when developing a story. I recommend that you use an egg timer, a stopwatch, or one of those mini hourglasses that come with games to mark your time. Once your time is up on a topic, move on even if you're not done. If it's a fill-in-the-blank topic, leave it blank. If it's a multiple-choice topic, pick something, anything. You can always return to modify your answers at a later time. Start at the beginning and go to the end. It is important to go through the entire process so that you get an understanding of what Dramatica is and how it works. Even though the story guide is presented linearly, Dramatica is a nonlinear system. This means you can start anywhere you want and proceed in any order you want. It's easier to do once you know what your choices are. Alright, here we go. The Dramatica desktop is a simple affair made up of 12 command tiles. The tile in the uppermost left corner is the story guide tile. We start by clicking where it says, start here. The story guide has three levels. Level 1 has the fused questions. Level 2 has everything in one plus a little more and level 3 has everything in 1 and 2 plus a whole lot more. We are new users, so we'll choose level 1. The story guide is part of Dramatica's query system. The query system window consists of three major parts. The left side of the window displays the topics list. Below the topics list are the controls that help you move through the topics. Next moves you to the next topic, prev moves you to the previous topic, start moves you to the first topic in the topic list, Close closes the query system and puts you back at the Dramatica desktop. Below the controls, in tiny letters and numbers, it says Story Forms 32,768. That's how many different story forms Dramatica Pro has to choose from. Our goal is to find the one that works for our story. It sounds daunting, but it's doable in a short amount of time. The majority of the query system window is given to the content of the current topic. Some topics are informational, such as this welcome screen. Other topics are more interactive, as we'll see. Click on the Next button to move to the next topic. Oh look! Another informational topic! It's important material that I recommend reading when you go through the story guide on your own. For now, however, I'll show you another technique to move to the next topic. Press Shift-Enter to go to the next topic. This new topic is somewhat different than the other informational topics. Along the bottom of the topic area, are a row of small buttons in an area we call the Help View. We'll use the Help View quite a bit as we move through the story guide. The third way to move to the next topic is to use your mouse in the Topics list. Click on the small icon next to Getting Started in the Topics list to expand the menu and display the subtopics. Click on the Story Title topic. This is a typical fill-in-the-blank style topic. There's a question at the top and a place for you to write an answer. Notice the Help View explanation for this story title topic. As we'll see, each Help View button contains different types of help. For this walkthrough, I've chosen to make up a story based on Little Red Riding Hood. Its simplicity gives me enough latitude to be creative. I'll call this story Little Red. Press Shift-Enter to go to the next topic. The Story Logline the story guide asks us to briefly describe what happens in Little Red, including the beginning, middle, and end. The explanation text in the Help View describes this as if we were writing a short blurb for a television listing. Click on the Theory Help View button. While the Explain button gives us an expanded explanation of the topic's question, the Theory button describes the intent behind the question. For this topic, the story guide suggests that we look into our inspiration for the story. I see this story as being in an urban setting rather than the traditional forest. Here's my logline. Little Red leaves home one morning to deliver a basket of baked goods to her grandmother across town. 
On the way there, she barely escapes from Harry Wolf, who is determined to get into her goodie basket. Mr. Wolf assaults Grandma and assumes her identity. When Little Red shows up at Grandma's, it's not your typical fairy tale ending. I have no idea where I'm going with this, and that's the point. We're on a deadline. Write something, anything, and then move on. Press Shift Enter to go to the next topic. I don't know enough about this story yet to write a plot synopsis, so we're going to skip this topic. In fact, let's skip the next few topics. These are important, and I highly recommend exploring them on your own, but I want to go directly to the Create Character topic. Press Shift Enter three times to move to the Create Characters topic. There are many ways to create characters in Dramatica Pro. This topic contains one of them. Click on the Explain button. A full explanation of how this topic works displays in the Help view. Click on the Create a Character button. A new character is created. Let's change the character's name from Character Number 1 to Little Red. Press Tab to move to the Role field. The Role field lets us put a short one or two word label on the character. I'll type in Little Girl. Click on the drop down list next to Gender and select Female. Before we describe Little Red any further, let's create the other major players in this story. Click on the Create a Character button. Character number two's name is Harry Wolf. His role is Escaped Convict, and he is male. Click on the Create a Character button. Character number three's name is Granny Moocher. Her role is Little Red's grandmother, and she is female. Click on the Create a Character button. Character number four's name is Albert Buck Hunter. His role is Security Patrolman, and he is male. That's all the characters we're going to create right now. We can always come back to this topic and create more whenever we want. Let's move on. Press Shift-Enter to go to the next topic. Notice the characters we've created are in the Topics list. Two new subtopics can be seen under Albert's name, Description, and Activities. The Description topic is highlighted and indicates that it is the current topic. This topic asks us to describe Albert Buck Hunter's personality and physical traits. Buck is in his late 40s, sloppily dressed with a huge beer belly. He has jelly donut crumbs and coffee stains on his shirt. He's kind of a dork, but is a surprisingly good security guy. This is someone you'd like, despite his appearances. Press Shift-Enter to go to the next topic. This topic asks us to describe Albert Buck Hunter's activities. When not on duty patrolling Granny Moocher's neighborhood for big-time security and armed response, Buck can be found knocking back beers and playing foosball at the local sports bar, Ferry's Landing. I'll skip past describing the other characters for this walkthrough, but you should give some in your own story. Click on the Main and Impact Character Intro topic. 